Hi everyone, welcome to FreeRTOS On Demand video, where we cover the topics requested by you, members of the FreeRTOS community. I'm your host, Rashid Talukter. We've got a really great episode for you today. Uh, we're going to ta be talking about uh, debugging uh, TLS connections, but before we get into that, uh, I just want to touch on the fact that Embedded World is right around the corner. As many of you know, Embedded World is one of the biggest uh, conferences of the year. This year it's virtual. Um, and uh, it's always a, always a great conference. A lot of inf uh, important information gets shared, really deep, rich topics. And one of the, one of the topics I want to highlight is uh, Richard Berry is going to be giving a, uh, providing a session keynote uh, about future-proofing uh, microcontroller designs uh, with FreeRTOS. So you'll definitely want to check that out. We also have some other sessions, uh, FreeRTOS sessions as well. Make sure to take a look at those, and I hope you all have a really great Embedded World this year. Um, now, with that out of the way, the, the topic for today, like I said, is about debugging your TLS connections. Uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about uh, debugging uh, certificate issues uh, with, with your TLS connections, and we're going to be using a lot of uh, really great popular uh, open source tools on, on hardware that's really ubiquitous to all of us. Uh, almost everyone has a Raspberry Pi or 5 or 10 just laying around. Um, so we're going to be using a Raspberry Pi to basically, and some open source tools to uh, troubleshoot your TLS uh, connectivity issues. It's, these are questions that we really get a lot of, so definitely uh, great to be able to cover that today. And speaking of covering it today, uh, we've got none other than uh, FreeRTOS engineer, uh, Carl London. Carl, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing today? Good, good. Um, great to have you here. And, you know, before we even dive in, let's give a really, really quick for our viewers, uh, let's tell them what, you know, TLS is and what, what, it, uh, what it means for embedded devices and kind of a quick example of, of something that we're all familiar with in terms of TLS. Right, so um, the TLS protocol is a security protocol that kind of piggybacks on other networking protocols um, to provide you a variety of um, security you know, perks. So for example, one of its responsibilities is to authenticate your peer in your um, networking connection. So it'll make sure that if you're browsing to say, um, a server on your web browser that it'll verify that the server is who it says it is and um, make sure that it's not you know some fraudulent server that's trying to jump in the middle and steal your information um, another use of the tls protocol is that it will encrypt your data so if you're sending data to a server um, that data can't be intercepted by someone else and then um, stolen so what I have today is um, I've started this demo in the background while we got started. And what I've done is launched a demo and I'm trying to connect to an IoT MQTT endpoint, but the TLS handshake is failing. And I'm getting this error message here. And it says that the root CA in the file system did not sign the chain. So that means that what certificates we're getting back from this endpoint here are not aligned with the certificate we've flashed onto our device and said that this is the certificate we want to trust. Um, so what we can do from here is we can copy and paste this endpoint and open up my terminal and we can use the open source OpenSSL tool to take a look and see what kind of certificates are on the server at this endpoint. So I'm going to use the OpenSSL S client and I'm going to use the command show certs so it'll output the certificates on this endpoint to my console. And now we'll paste the server that we're trying to connect to on our TI board. And now we can scroll up through this output here. It's very verbose, but what we really want to do here is kind of try and diagnose the issue that the TI board is seeing, um, and that it's reporting that the root CA is not being trusted by this TI device. So if we scroll to the top, we can see this root CA, VeriSign Incorporated. Um, 
And what this means is that we're hitting an endpoint that's serving this VeriSign CA. But actually, when we started this demo, we had configured our device to trust the Amazon CA1. So now we just want to double check that the OpenSSL tool is seeing the same kind of network packets as our TI board. So what I've configured today is I have a Raspberry Pi that I've SSH'd into in my left terminal, and I've configured it into a Wi-Fi 8B. So it'll sit between my router and the TI board. So instead of the TI board connecting directly to my router, it's gonna connect to this Raspberry, Raspberry Pi. And now we're gonna use another open source tool called TCP dump to try and collect the network packets sent to and from the TI board. So first we have to specify which network interface we wanna collect on, and that's gonna be the I command. And then since we know that the TI board is gonna connect over Wi-Fi, we're gonna specify WLAN zero. And now we wanna make sure that we filter on stuff coming in and out of the TI board to try to keep our network packet small and filter out any noise. So I'm gonna type in source and copy and paste the IP address that the TI board printed to the console. And then since we wanna see packets coming to the TI board and also from the TI board, we're gonna add the destination flag as well. Now I'm gonna add the W flag to make sure that instead of writing these packets to the console, um, we wanna write them to a file so we can analyze them in Wireshark, a GUI interface for looking at network captures. So I'm gonna start the TCP dump and now I'm gonna reflash the demo. And in a moment, we'll see what kind of packets are getting sent to and from the TI board. So we can make sure that it's getting the same kind of data we're seeing with our OpenSSL tool. And while that's happening, I just wanna to touch for Windows users, um, you know, because, because uh, uh, OpenSSL is reliant on a positive system, um, you can actually run OpenSSL and run these commands on the Raspberry Pi itself. And the Raspberry Pi is connected to the internet uh, via the wired LAN. Um, and then the TI board is connected uh, wirelessly uh, to the Raspberry Pi, which is acting as an access point, like Carl mentioned. Yep. So now we've captured the packets being sent to and from the TI board, and I've opened it in Wireshark. So what we're interested in is this protocol column here, and we wanna try and look for the TLS protocol to kind of try and follow the story of the TLS handshake and see what's going wrong. So we can see that the client hello is going through, so we're successfully sending packets to the server And then the server is responding with a server hello. So we know that we're getting packets back from the server. But then we get the certificate handshake step from the server. And immediately after that, our device is closing the connection with an alert. So that must mean that it's sending us a certificate that we don't trust. So now if we open up this packet in Wireshark, we can take a look and see that it is indeed getting the same server certificate as the OpenSSL tool was. And we can see it's the Semtech Class 3 Secure Server CA. But the one that we want to see is the AWS CA1. So what we can do is we can go back to the OpenSSL tool and then append the dash ATS address to our endpoint. And this is gonna be the newer IoT endpoint that is serving Amazon CA1 certificates. So now when we scroll up through this output, we'll see that it's what we expect. The Amazon root CA is the last certificate in the chain. So now if we modify our demo to the endpoint that we expect to work, we should be able to get a successful MQTT connection to AWS. So now I'm rebuilding the demo with the new credentials.
and now flash it to the TI device and then open up the serial port. And now we'll wait and see if the connection was successful this time. And now you can see in my terminal output that we were able to establish an MQTT connection to that ETS endpoint. And now we're publishing and receiving messages to and from the MQTT broker hosted in AWS. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, that was a really great demonstration. Um, you know, I think you really showed us a lot there, Carl, because, you know, while, while we kind of captured um, uh, in a fault with the actual endpoint and us receiving the, the, a different uh, server root CA, um, you know, there are a lot of steps in there as well within Wireshark where, you know, you, you also showed us, hey, this, is, this shows us that uh, there's actually nothing wrong with the, our TCP connection, for example, right? Um, and then finally, we got to the point where uh, we saw that it was actually the, the service EA that's actually uh, wrong. So I think that, you know, we, uh, Freertas community members can really use a lot of these tools and these steps uh, to be able to triage their connectivity issues, um, you know, even further past just, you know, what you showed in, in this episode today. So thank you again, Carl, for uh, taking the time with us and, and showing this and putting this demo together. Thank you, Rashid. Yeah, I, I can't wait to have you on again. And you know, hopefully we get to cover a few more tips and tricks for community members uh, so that they can triage any other issues that they might have uh, when it comes to connectivity. Um, so definitely be on the lookout for that uh, and, and seeing Carl uh, here with us again. Anyway, thanks a lot, Carl. Uh, Thank you for joining us. So that concludes our episode today. Uh, hopefully it was really beneficial, useful, and uh, if you liked it, make sure to hit the thumbs up button uh, and hit the subscribe and the notification bell so you can be uh, notified when we have the next episode. Until then, have a great rest of, the, of your day and see you in a better world and see you next time. Bye now.